Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. Today's video, I want to talk about the Hansu powerlifting plates, which you can see right here. These are calibrated, obviously, and these are the kilo versions. More about that in just a second, but a little bit of a detour, and I'm just going to stop the video in terms of what I'm going to get into, because I want to tell you up front, these plates are fantastic, probably because they're almost identical to every other powerlifting plate out there. So I've owned the Rogue ones, I've owned the Ivanko ones, I've used Aleco, Titex, Vulcan, strong arm sport, even the challenge plates out of India. At the end of the day, a lot of those plates are almost identical, probably because they're mostly all made in the same factories overseas. These plates are no different. So if you haven't heard of Hansu before, you're kind of on the fence, wanted to know my opinion on them. Look, they're the same as anything else, and they're going to be great in that regard. A couple things unique that are going to stick out with these, which I'll get to in a second. But let me just talk first about who might powerlifting plates be for in general, since all of them tend to be fairly similar. So number one is if you compete in powerlifting, these could be great for you. Obviously you want to practice like you play. And especially if you haven't lifted in kilos or with calibrated plates before and the thinness of the plates themselves can barely be off-putting the first time you compete, these plates will get you ready. And again, be the same thing that you're gonna see in competition. So obviously if you compete, these would be great. Number two, if you don't compete, but you really want tolerant plates in terms of what the weight is, so if you're looking for plates that are extremely accurate, these are going to be them. They're all within 10 grams of the stated weight. These plates that I weighed, all extremely accurate. They're also going to have extremely tight tolerances on the center hole, really close to 50 millimeters, which means there's not going to be any slop on the barbell. In fact, these things are so tight fitting on your barbell, the first couple of times you put them on, your barbell sleeve is going to look like a rainbow just because the paint on the inside is going to scrape off because there's really not any wiggle room whatsoever. So these are gonna fit super snug on your bar and be great overall because again, they're so thin, they're not gonna take up a ton of space, extremely accurate. So even if you don't compete, they could potentially be for you. And last and maybe most important for some people, especially given the timing of this video, these plates might be for you because these ones are actually in stock. So if you wanna order these today, you can, and you'll probably get them in a couple of days, which again, is unique in this time with the pandemic and COVID and all that other stuff going on. So what sets these apart? Well, number one, the face of these is a little bit different. It's a little bit of a unique face. In fact, I think outside of Vulcan, every other brand looks really similar. The Hansu plates stick out in my mind, as do the Vulcan ones, because the face is a little bit different. Whereas for most of the competitors, you just have the numbers denominated on either side of the hole with the other up and top and bottom of the plate looking like the company's logo. It's really just like a logo swap. There's no difference. Again, probably because they're made in the same factories. Flip these on the back side, what you have are two stickers covering calibrated plugs, which again is how you get these weights so accurate. Uh, these are no different there as well. The lips on these plates, the color of these plates, the denominations that they're available in, again, all very similar across all brands. One of the cool things about these ones, even though I have the kilo version of them, they actually have pound variants as well. So if you either don't want to lift in kilos because your kilo math isn't great, or maybe you don't compete and you just want, like I said, really tolerant plates in terms of the center hole and the weight tolerances on them, the pound plates could be a good version because you're America and you could just use your plates like you have been doing. They offer those as well and those are also in stock and shipping as of today as well. So unique in that regard as well. Some other interesting things, I wouldn't say unique necessarily, is the fact that they offer free shipping sometimes. I say sometimes because the way they are set up, the Lujanju, who I got these plates through, who are located in California, basically offer free shipping to the western half of the United States. On the eastern half, which I happen to live in, they charge shipping, which is interesting. So if you're on the western half, these become an even better deal because, again, they're in stock. I'll talk about the pricing in just a second, but free shipping, which is always good. Eastern half, in stock, but not free shipping. And it's unique because most people probably aren't just going to buy the change plates, which you can because they're in stock too. I haven't mentioned that yet. Uh, a pair of, let's say, 25s is somewhat expensive. But again, you're dealing with 110 pounds of weight. It's going to cost somewhere between like 130 or 150 to get all the way to the East Coast like I am here. But that being said, the pricing only increases slightly as you go up because to get a whole set, meaning 12 reds overall and a pair of every other color down, is going to cost 270. So it really kind of doesn't jump up as high as you'd think given the initial cost to just ship a pair of plates, which can be nice. So it's interesting. West Coast, more ideal. East Coast, not as ideal. But I think what offsets it is the price of these plates is very competitive, again, to all the competitors. So they're very similar, if not cheaper in some regard, especially when you, number one, potentially factor in free shipping. So for example, 
I think the reds, a pair of reds through Hansu and Lujanju cost like $10 more than a pair of red from Rogue, but Rogue is going to charge you shipping. And if you're on the Western side of the United States, you get these for free, which is going to save you like a hundred bucks overall. Now on the East coast, again, you're not as lucky because you're going to be paying shipping, but these are in stock and available, whereas everyone else is all sold out. And when they do come in stock, they're really hard to number one, get because they sell out extremely quickly. But especially if you're looking to get like a whole complete set, I haven't seen the sets come online and available. They've just been selling in single pairs and chances are you're not going to be able to build a complete set because things sell out extremely fast. So even though on the East Coast, the price isn't going to be as appealing necessarily, they're probably going to be right as expensive in some cases as their other counterparts, which shouldn't matter because again, they're probably all made in the same factory and they look almost identical with all the same specs. Um, but again, the free shipping might offset that or compel you to get these because you can get them sooner. And again, for me on the East Coast, the shipping is there, but it took roughly, I think about seven working days to get to me from California, uh, which to me is fine. Uh, but all these showed up in fantastic shape. They're all boxed individually. Uh, there is some, a little bit of like residue from what they packed them in. It was like some sort of like soft styrofoam type sheet. And that comes off on some of the bigger plates, which you can see it does scratch off. And I'm sure it'll come off if I put more elbow grease or actually get some kind of cleaner to do it. But it's a little bit annoying. I wanted to call it out in case it happened to you. Uh, otherwise, these things have been great for me in the couple of weeks that I've owned them. I did talk a little bit about the paint coming off the center hole on your barbell. I want to talk about paint just really quick in general because that's one of the questions I get a lot. How does the paint hold up on these? And my answer is just like any other calibrated powerlifting plate, they are simply painted. So over time, as they bang and they clang, whether from doing deadlifts, whether from being in a rack or taking them on and off uh, an actual weight tree or in this case like a toaster, it's going to chip the paint in time. I don't have any major chips now. And even on my other plates, I didn't really have much chipping. Again, I'm just a single guy in his basement lifting weights and not heavy enough or dangerously enough or aggressive enough to really do too much damage. My plates have always held up extremely well. I'd had hardly minimal chipping on my Rogue and Ivanko set, uh, but these will chip just as much as any other plate. So over time, if these are in a commercial setting, they're gonna look like crap probably in a couple of months, but a lot of people like that extra character. They looked weathered, they look used, they've got some pizzazz to them. But if you're buying plates to look pretty and you don't typically take care of your equipment that well, just know that these are going to definitely chip over time. But as of right now, like I said, they're a little bit more unique because on the front face, they do look different than the other ones out there. From the side view you guys are seeing right now, they look the same as any other more expensive brand or sold out brand that you can get. So if you're interested in powerlifting plates, these are a great option, especially depending if you live on the West Coast or not, or if you want pound plate variants, or you're just looking for something in stock, I would highly recommend these and I'll link them in the description box below. And right before I end the video, I do wanna give a big thank you to Strong Arm Sport who actually hooked me up with this weight rack for them. In an ideal world, there would be two and you'd have this on like a powerlifting platform where you have two on either side of the lifter and then you just load them up. I just have one because I have way too much stuff in my basement already, but these work out really nice and I think it looks pretty badass if I don't say my so myself. I'll link this in the description box below. If you have any other questions about these plates or other plates, I've got a lot of plates coming. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I'll get to those as soon as I can. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.